So for this video, our instructions say, find the vertical asymptotes, represented by VA for short, and the horizontal asymptotes, HA, if any, for each function. So they want us to find the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes of each function. So we're going to work through three examples. Now it's important that we know the rules on how to do this. Right, so there's different rules depending if we're finding vertical asymptotes and if we're finding horizontal asymptotes. Now for vertical asymptotes, it says that f of x will have vertical asymptotes at the value of x where the denominator is equal to zero. So in order to find vertical asymptotes, we need to take our function, specifically the denominator, set it equal to zero and solve. The values that we get for x when we do that, we will have vertical asymptotes at those values. Now, the process for finding horizontal asymptotes is a little bit different. For this one here, we're essentially kind of just looking at our function, and based off of the rules, we determine what's going on. So, uh, this f of x that I have here, that kind of just represents the function that you have, right, your numerator and your denominator. We're specifically going to be focusing on uh, the degrees of our numerator and our denominator, and then our leading coefficients. Um, but essentially, the rules say this. They say if m is greater than n, so that means if the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the, num the numerator, then you're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero. Right? So the degree, remember, is the highest power. Right? So if the power of the denominator is bigger than the numerator, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero. If the degree of the numerator and the denominator are the same, right, if they're equal to each other, then we look at our leading coefficients. We're going to have a horizontal asymptote of the leading coefficient of your numerator over the leading coefficient of your denominator. And the third one says if m is less than n, so that means if the degree of the denominator is smaller than that of the numerator, then there are no horizontal asymptotes. So let's first go through finding the vertical asymptotes. Right, the rule for vertical asymptotes says to set the denominator equal to zero and solve the values that we get for x, we're going to have vertical asymptotes there. So starting with example A, again, we're specifically focused on the denominator. So our denominator for A is x squared minus 25. We're going to set this equal to zero and solve. In order to solve this equation here, this is a quadratic equation, so we have a few options on how to solve it. But taking a look at this particular quadratic equation, I notice that this is the difference of squares, or this is perfectly in the difference of squares format. We have two terms, one is positive, one is negative, and they're both perfect squares. All right. x times x would get me x squared, and 5 times 5 would get me 25. So if you remember the rule for difference of squares, it tells you to add uh, those a's and b's together and to subtract a and b together. Remember, a is just what times what gives you x squared, so x times x is x squared, so a is going to be x. b is just what times what gives you 25, 5 times 5 is 25, so b is equal to 5. Add them together, subtract them together. Make sure it's still set equal to zero, and we're going to continue to solve. At this point here, since we're factored already, we then use the zero factor property, which tells us to split our factors up, set them each equal to zero, and solve. These are one-step little mini equations to solve, so I get either x is equal to negative 5, or I get x is equal to positive 5. So that means I'm going to have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 5, and at x is equal to positive 5. Looking at the horizontal asymptotes, for example, a, the horizontal asymptotes, again, remember, it depends on the degrees of your numerator and your denominator. So the degree of my numerator is a 1, since the highest power I have there is a 1. The degree of my denominator is a 2 because of this x squared. So the denominator is bigger than the numerator, right? So the denominator is m, 
right? Um, so when m is greater than n is what we're looking for. Remember, the denominator is the m, the numerator is the n, and we can see here by, the, by this little rule here. Um, so when m is greater than n, that's this first one, it says that we will have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero. That's all we have to do is we need to compare the degrees, look at our three set of rules over here and figure out which one it is. All right, moving on to example B. So we're going to focus on finding the vertical asymptote first, which means we need to take our denominator, set it equal to zero and solve. So our denominator is five X plus 12. We're gonna set that equal to zero and solve this. So the first thing we need to do is subtract 12 on both sides, giving us 5x is equal to negative 12. And dividing 5 on both sides gives us that x is equal to a negative 12 fifths. So for a vertical asymptote, we have one where x is equal to a negative 12 fifths. For a horizontal asymptote, let's compare the degrees. The degree of our numerator is 1. The degree of our denominator is 1 also, so that means that they are the same. So that means we're looking at our second rule here, where m is equal to n. So the rule says if m is equal to n, then f of x will have a horizontal asymptote where y is equal to a of n over b of n. So that just means the leading coefficient of my numerator over the leading coefficient of my denominator. All right, so that means so it's going to be at y is equal to, so my numerator is 3, my denominator is 5, so we have a horizontal asymptote where y is equal to 3 fifths. Right? We just take our leading coefficients and divide them. So our third example, we're going to focus on finding the vertical asymptotes first, which means we need to take our denominator, set it equal to 0, and solve. So our denominator is x plus 1. So here we have x plus 1 is equal to 0. So to solve this, we subtract 1 on both sides, getting that x is equal to negative 1. So that's going to be our vertical asymptote. For our horizontal asymptote, we need to compare our degrees. So the degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is 1. So we need to use the one that focuses on when our denominator's degree is less than the numerator, so that's our third one here. And it says if m is less than n, then there is no horizontal asymptote. So for horizontal asymptote, I'm going to say none. All right, so for vertical asymptote, set the denominator equal to zero and solve. For horizontal asymptote, you do have to be aware of these three rules here and be familiar with them uh, so that you know which rule is going to apply to your specific function. Otherwise, that's it for this video.